Welcome to Small Practice Support Information Session 27. In this Law Society of Ireland recording, Larry Fenlon and Justin Purcell discuss the future of law and technology. little bit about the erosion of fees you know and so fees fee value has been eroded and so that it really is imperative that you look at the cost base to a point yeah well you know after after you've stripped out all that internal cost like what's next is making the whole show more efficient and uh, the way we operate is because we're comfortable at it you know and maybe it doesn't need the labor intensity of such a senior solicitor uh, as much as it does maybe you know uh, practitioners who are who are uh, who've dialed into this are are saying, well, no, I can't trust anyone else to do the job as well as I do. Well, look, the world has moved in, in a sense that uh, most practices that do grow have to have some hierarchical structure where work is delegated down and it's overseen and with proper supervision and proper training, lots can happen. So, you know, I always say to people in, in our practice that if you're not, <clears throat> if you're not making money on a, an instruction, it's either you're hugging the work, you're not delegating down, or, or what you're doing is, too, you know, is too slow or inefficient or you priced it up wrong. So there's certain things that, you know, there's certain price sensitivities to pieces of work that we all know there's very little budge on. And those pieces, you know, unless you're doing the volume <coughs> that justifies it, then maybe, you know, you, you need to look at that as a practice area because uh, volume dictates um, what efficiencies you can put in. And efficiencies are generally either delegation to uh, a pool of, of juniors or indeed uh, some level of automation in the system. OK, and automation, you can't automate just in basically without digitization. So what does digitization mean? It just means converting a piece of paper to a, a searchable um, um, uh, on, uh, on digital document that's housed somewhere centralized that everyone can find. Uh, and, you know, you have to start digitizing, then you automate and then you can capture some data. And that's really what Nextech delivers. Um, and what does that mean for pra uh, practitioners practically? Well, a means imagine you can carry your file on your phone you know that's really where we all need to be at uh, or on your laptop if it's not on your phone because we're all in a much more mobile lifestyle than we used to be you know very few of us sit behind desks unless you're just doing conveyance and all the time for instance so um you know that's the starting point digitization um and then automation so if, if you're taking the first point like what, what cost can you strip out of the business to make it more efficient more profitable we've talked about that and then on certain practice areas, uh, I think you've got to analyze, are you making money in them? And, you know, that brings me on to a bit of time recording. Uh, if, just if, before we go on to that, yeah. I just want to bring it back to the, the whole idea of the portal and yeah. the, the platform, which allows uh, an increased level of maybe customer service for, for users and obviously brings this automation. Yeah. Okay. So th th this is something we're, we're working on at the moment, Justin. Yeah. We're not there. We're not to finish our Don't prepare. Sure, but it's, but, it's uh, your, your, your view of the future. Yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly think that like how it's going to work in the future is the clients will have a portal access. OK, so they'll have online access to your portal and um, you may have an app and a platform, for instance. And uh, so so take your average conveyance instead of you having to call them up or they call you up and say, where are we at and how, how far are we? Uh, they can log in and they can see a visual um, um, program, for instance, of start to finish over a period of months and where you're at and costs, projected costs versus actual costs. A projected time versus actual time, milestones which have been reached. Um, you can also, in this portal, upload and download documents. And that is, the client can upload the documents uh, and download documents from you get, uh, under state permissions. Third parties, such as you know maybe local authority uh, officials, or I'm just taking on the conveyancing thing, or banks could upload their own documents to the file, and you can download it. You can allow them to download from yours. Uh, and effectively, what you're getting is a much more centralized portal where a number of stakeholders are all logging in. Um, and we're, we're not wasting this huge amount of time, that, which is chronically loss making, quite frankly, in any transaction, be it a conveyance in, uh, or, a, or, a, or a, a commercial transaction or a litigation. Where all this chasing goes on and all this correspondence goes on chasing stuff. Like, basically, <clears throat> I, I sometimes feel we're all glorified chasers. That's all we do. It's chase third parties to do something we need to do by a certain time. And if you have this portal and people are getting automated alerts saying, look, Justin, you're two days over your deadline by which you said you would deliver that. And that's automa automatically sent out to you. It saves me having to pick up the phone. It saves me having to you know, send an email or a letter or whatever the hell 
communication tool I'm using. Um, so it's realistic know, the, for small practitioners to adopt. Uh, uh, absolutely. You see, no, no, no small practitioner is going to build their own. They're not going to I'm going to commission someone to build, and that's the barmy stuff. But they're, they're certainly, you know, the, the tools are developing. That we're getting closer and closer to the solution. And uh, um, so I think, you know, it's not here right now, but it it, it is certainly, um, um, it's going to be. Well, sorry, there are certain tools out there. They're a little bit rudimentary and basic, but I think we're a year or two away from that. Mm. And and why wouldn't you? And again, I come back to the point: you can't go to a portal unless you have a digitized system. You know, that's it. All so, starts with which is moving from paper to paperless. And then you're into mobility. You're into smaller office. You're into way more efficiency. You're into cost cutting. Like we talked about cost cutting earlier on, just, just a point, like how much paper is used? You know, it's not going to break the bank stuff, but A, you're doing a bit for the environment. B, you're saving costs. C, you're saving space. D, your, your office looks a little bit more, you know, tidy. So you can actually invite people into it without them tripping over files. And that sort of, so look, you know, people who know me will know I've been, been harping on about digitization for quite some time, but the portal is where it's all going to be. Um, so how, think how would it, you respond, sorry, to, to cut over you there, to the idea that maybe if the clients need to demand this first, or is it that the practices need to be pushing it? <laughs> okay, kind of so chicken and egg. yeah, it is. And, and this is what you often hear about practitioners like Larry, why we bother with online access? Sure, very few people access it. And you put, it becomes a selling point. You, we're in a very crowded market, Justin. Like, really, has our practice changed sufficiently in 300 years? I don't really think so. It's law is a very mature market. And therefore, you ask yourself, how many competitors are out there, even in your own local town or province or suburb or city? Like, there's you know, people people have so much choice and how you stand out in a crowded market is very difficult but one of those is that you are technologically driven you are innovative what does that attract it attracts people and businesses who are like-minded technologic driven innovative they tend to be quite successful businesses so you know there's there's almost like a magnetic force there um um so do clients demand this no okay but uh, again it's all about, do you want to run it as a business or do you want to run it as a practice? And if you want to run it as a business, you have to look at cost and you have to look at efficiency and, and innovation and, and expanding your pool of clients and perhaps your, your, your business as well. So I don't think clients are ever going to say, look, Larry, I, I, I need this board because it can't function without it. But what I'm seeing now is in much larger transactions. So we're doing some work on like the Intel site, the National Children's Hospital, the construction end of things. And all the contractors there, I basically have portals because the pure volume, the amount of stakeholders, and they just don't want to be swamped with paper. So they said, it's, it's actually in a position of power. They're saying, if you want to work for us, the condition of the contract is you have to operate everything through the portal. So you can see it's happening in certain industries. And then you'll find those clients we talk to this listener go, why don't you have a portal? Ah, oh, Jason, no. uh, we're nowhere near that in law. So you know us, Luddites in law. Uh, I, I don't think that cuts it. And uh, so, you know, the guys who are offering this sort of service stand out from the crowd, they attract certain clients, and that innovation creates a massive, massive energy, I think, of the business as well. And it's cost saving. Do you want to talk a little bit about automation, or do you feel you've kind of covered that already? Or like... uh, well, I think when, when, I, when I say, it, like, if I'm on the receiving end of this, uh, and I'm not surrounded by digitization, automation, data capture, what's it mean to be in practical yeah. terms? What, I really want to, what it really means is if, if there's 30 steps in any conveyance and transaction, take for instance, I know I'm concentrating conveyance, but it's bread and butter of most practitioners. Right? If, if there's 30 steps um, and I have a digitized system that is a digital as opposed to paperless or paper um, a file, uh, I can create automated prompts for myself. I can set reminders. I can, it, it can draft generic uh, repetitive type of letters or communications. Um, it can send notices to third parties. So, you know, automation is, is a workflow of, of almost domino effect. When it, it, this thing happens, the next thing must happen. And, and third parties and people within your firm get reminders of that and documents are automatically drafted and sent you for approval. And what it means is, look, there's no point to talk about automation unless you're into repetitive stuff. If you're not doing like 50 of these a year, you know, you're wasting your time uh, getting into automation. So like those who will prosper in the future are those who um, either have the scale uh, to be able to invest in this stuff or do the same thing over and over again. So the specialist practitioner is the winner here, not the generalist. The generalist is swamped with increasing regulation, paperwork, uh, and, uh, and administration. It's not really what they got into law for. 
So the first bit is, is to digitize. Listen, here's a question. Yeah. Is that conveyancing portal that you run in-house, is it run in-house or, or have you developed it with a third party? Uh, basically. Um, and then what other to, tools are you using if you're willing to disclose? Yeah. So like what LexTech does is it basically develops <clears throat> portals for clients on demand. Okay. Um, that, that's what it does. And, uh, and it operates under a SaaS model, which is basically software as a service. What does that mean? It basically means subscription. Think of Spotify, 10 bucks a month for your Spotify premium account. Uh, not, obviously not that sort of price, but it's, it's a monthly cost as opposed to a, a massive capital expenditure, CapEx, uh, some that you have to pay. So essentially Microsoft, you think about it, we're, we're great believers in Microsoft, okay? We're not, we don't have any ties with them or we're not, you know, backed by them, but like Microsoft and probably Salesforce are the two real mega players in this space. And what they've created is an ecosystem. So I just wanted to think about like the sun and all the planets that go around the sun, right? <clears throat> Basically, Microsoft is the sun and they created obviously, you know, Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, uh, then, you know, BI, uh, um, um, they've created um, uh, app solutions. Um, and when you tie all those bits of that Microsoft ecosystem together and you configure it to actually a client's needs like a, a, a conveyancing portal. Uh, that, that really is a game changer. So we actually operate our own portal where, for instance, the requisitions and title are, and, and your, all your title is there in a data room and all the pre, uh, you know, contract inquiries are answered for everyone in advance. Um, you, you know, um, applies to requisitions are already set out. Um, We've developed portals actually for, for people in the property business as well in terms of completing their sales transactions online and that then converts over to the legal system. So um, to answer your question, Microsoft ecosystem, we configure it and tie it up um, and we license it out. Not, we don't license it, it's actually, we, it's a subscription-based service, okay? Sure. And therefore, which means it's very affordable. So question two, are you using Transact or Offer? Uh, they are the digital conveyancing systems that are... Yeah, Transact we use. Uh, Offer tends to be more um, uh, for, for uh, those really agents, property agents, as opposed to um, um, solicitors. But, but if you see what's happening in Offer uh, in particular, right, it is, it is digitized and automated and data capturing the, the sales function for, for um, uh, agents, state agents. What's missing is the next stage, which is the legal transaction. Again, the legal transaction can't go fully online because uh, we don't have um, a, a property registration authority effectively has to go that way. That's as simple as that. Once it goes that way, then everyone else will follow. And they're sure. the guys who are holding things up. And obviously there's civil service inertia. It's just not top of their heap. Um, not really an innovative body in the first place. And uh, it, it just needs a push over the line. And as I said, the Australians have done this and they've done it very well. And it just means that, you know, transactions, instead of taking, you know, three, six months are taking six, eight weeks. Um, and, and just the time, I, I think if you look at a 1500 euro conveyance and you ask yourself how much time was actually spent giving value to the client and say the 350 or 400 quid, what's the balance of the time chasing people, sending communications out to third parties. And that's where that portal will really assist, I think. Listen, Lawrence, we're, we're, we've got five minutes left. We've three big areas to, to, yeah. to chew on. Uh, digital marketing, the, the, there's new, ca new ways of operating the cabinet system and then new practice areas. Yeah, okay. Uh, how, well, look, how, how, will we drop one of them or will we go to them all three? Well, look, I can rattle through all three and then once we're cut off, then once the guillotine comes down, that's the, that. Yeah. Well, once if there's any questions the out there, we'll, we'll still take them as well, but yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so look, let, let's talk about digital marketing. The other thing about, uh, I think, COVID is it's not people from moving about, meeting people for coffees or lunches or dinners or client entertainment or client care. All that stuff was gone. And, and your, your ability to get your message out there was equally gone. And those skeptics who didn't believe in you know, Twitter or LinkedIn were probably found out um, because it's now the only way really to get your message out there. And, and again, that crowded market I spoke about. Um, <clears throat> we use a couple of tools that might interest practitioners that we find really, really good. One of them is Passel. It's effectively where you're piggybacking on a digital article in any type of media and then you're putting your own comment in it. The difference is you're not spending four weeks preparing an article that only other lawyers read. No one else reads articles except other lawyers. That's the first point. Blogs are basically three to 500 words of commentary. And what they do is they disclose to the wider market, you're an expert in a certain space, okay? And it's the regularity that you'll be able to pump those out through this tool is wonderful, okay? That's, that's first. Um, 
I think LinkedIn and Twitter are, are the chief vehicles we would use, but you know, B2C business, which is business to consumer, it's, it's Facebook and Instagram. Don't underestimate them. They are very powerful mediums. Um, and then if you don't have the skill set, get an outsource, okay? And, and better still, get your people educated so you can insource and ultimately and save cost. So I think <clears throat> the world is moving to video as well. We're working on some videos ourselves. And what a video is through, um, and this is not just someone speaking like a politician on, uh, and posting it on Twitter or, or LinkedIn. It, this is about getting proper videographers in there to uh, do a video of your business. Uh, and then it becomes, you know, you can pump that out on social media uh, as well. Uh, and, you know, people have one minute capacities for video. Okay, that's, that's what I want to say about social media. The other thing is on, on, on um, you know, business types, um, and structures of uh, smaller practitioners like the world's only going to get more regulated and I think the pressure on smaller practitioners is going to become more immense and uh, you know the profitable time that they have to earn is going to be taken away through admin <clears throat> and unless they have someone to do that for them at a cost effective rate the, it becomes quite an un unenjoyable practice what I've seen in France in particular is this concept of fiercely independent you know individual solicitors come together under this concept of a cabinet and that cabinet is basically a trading name that all of these practitioners say, I will trade under this name. I will put up two and a half to five percent of my income towards centralized administration, billing, invoicing, regulation, um, administration uh, um, and marketing. And it's much like a franchise model. I think that's a really interesting concept. Uh, um, particularly if I get to be still me, this you know, fiercely independent solicitor who uh, uh, my name is still everything to me and my reputation and I, I actually don't want to be controlled by anyone else it's such a loose association but it's centralized uh, administration and, and and cost and I think that's that's something that certainly um, uh, I think you're going to see a lot more of here because um, the legal service regulation authority are obviously going to shoot that sort of thing in um, uh, I think you know probably if you look at risk as well uh, among smaller practices, uh, the disciplinary section of the law society is 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 generally populated by male sisters over fifty five or so practitioners. Okay, and that's because you know the, just the pressure, the time pressure on them. Um, uh, you know, there's probably not the checks and balances you would have in the business. And so, from a regulatory perspective, it would obviously be be seen uh, as welcome. So, so for that cohort, uh, we talked about this teaching an old dog new tricks, and a lot of what you've talked about is kind of futuristic. And how does that? Re how is that relevant to me now? What, what suggestions would you have for them? Well, I would certainly say that, um, you know, um, if anyone's looking at an exit strategy, you have to have a saleable business. Most practitioners still think that they're going to get lots of money for the business. They don't. Um, <clears throat> the only reason why you get money for a business is if you have a will bank or you have, um, you're specialized in one area and um, uh, people want to buy your know-how and, and your business volume or else they want to buy a repetitive uh, commercial clients. So, you know, the way of making your business more valuable is, is through its special sauce or intellectual property internally. And one of those is, is to be different to everyone else, uh, to, to attract maybe a different type of client, a, a certain following. Uh, a, and I think it's about succession for the older practitioners that uh, they should, um, uh, uh, like uh, what I'm talking about, none of what I've talked about is massive cost, by the way. None of this is break the bank. No one's taking out a loan. You might have to take your loan out for professional indemnity and insurance this year. By God, it's gone up very considerably. But, you know, any of these tech stuff, it's, 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 it's small enough beer in the overall scheme of things. So, you know, don't fight it if you want success. You want to create value for your business. I think technology is going to be your friend, not your enemy. Sure. And then just, just in conclusion, talk about future practice areas. Where do you think the growth yeah. is coming from? And how yeah, are the okay. growth growing? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's really in response to, you know... Um, um, uh, this, this is a bit like beef farming, you know, um, um, it's, it's, it's sort of in decline and, and it's, they're always under price pressure. And I think you're going to see this. And there's only one way conveyancing is going and that's going to be priced down. You know, I think you're going to see the concept of licensed conveyancers coming in, whether we like it or not, in the medium term. You know, once, once the process digitized, which inevitably it will, you know, cost pressure will happen. You've seen the reforms, the Law Society or the, uh, the, the recent body appointed. Uh, by, by the Minister for Justice has talked about driving costs down. It's just constant pressure to drive costs down. And sometimes you're going to say, look, is this area profitable? If you're not time recorded, it's very hard to determine if you're profitable or not. So some people say, look, geez, I just set a fee and that's it. But again, if you run a business or a practice, that's the key question. If you're not time recording, you can't measure that. So what we do is sometimes we run over uh, massively over fixed prices. We say, look, we can't price it at that again, or we can't work with the same people working on it again, or else we're never doing it again. 
And, uh, yeah. and sometimes you need to do that exercise to understand maybe I need to get out of a certain area and, and, uh, and adopt uh, and, and build a practice you, future. So I talk about- You talked about some sectors like technology. Yeah. Yeah, so like there's one one thing that's actually becoming quite prosperous uh, for lawyers is, is the area of data, okay? And it's fairly dull, but it's very relevant. Now you can sue any data holder for any data breach, no matter if your, your client hasn't suffered any loss at all. You don't have to prove loss under GDPR, which is extraordinary. So what you're going to see is mass claims coming in by um, 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 data breaches occurring um, by, by, from big companies, okay? That's the first thing. Uh, cyber, uh, so people don't rob... Uh, uh, um, uh, armed lorries anymore. <laughs> they rob online and the whole area of cyber risk and cyber threats is real. Most practitioners will have, have suffered some level of cyber threats. They just won't admit it in public. It's not a, a thing of shame. It actually happens pretty much every business in the country. But that is all actionable cases that arise from us. So from the litigation perspective, that's interesting. On the non-litigious side, I think like Ireland is obviously centre for aviation leasing, okay? And that's not going to happen, going to go away anytime soon, despite what's happened in the airline industry. Uh, and, and practitioners seem to think, oh, Oh, that's a fancy fancy stuff it's not from me absolutely not um, if there's no if you if you could do a commercial lease you could do an aviation lease it's just got a lot more zeros on it and and i think you know um uh, leasing companies of which there's about you know 150 in this country are always looking for a, a, a better cost return on their legal services and maritime is tipped to be a very significant place uh, and, and same thing that the idea are trying to um, create here uh, it's the same hub as they did for aviation leasing and then the green economy of course everything's energy and green that's the way of the future um, and then the international piece justin finally i think uh, smaller practitioners just say oh, international is not for me uh, there's lots of networks there that cost you a grand or less to join um, that you can uh, be you know a source of income in uh, referral work um, and and we'll give you a jolly way, away once a year uh, on the company account um, and I think that's that's another source international I think I look at you know the, the Irish embassies are expanding their footprint in countries and particularly North Africa Middle East um, and uh, I know that's an interesting concept you know the, the Coxes and the Bacans aren't out there yet uh, there's room for everyone else and uh, to, to follow that trail a bit like the missionary trail um, Listen, Lawrence, it, or Larry, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Uh, I think there's a, loads of nuggets of really great information. We'll have to have you back when we've, when we've more time to, to explore more in depth. Next week, we've got Sally Young from Enterprise Ireland going to discuss the big B word, Brexit. So what the hell is going to happen and how do we prepare ourselves? So uh, thanks for your time today, everybody. Uh, hopefully we'll see you. Larry, thanks a million for your time and your insights. So generously, Anytime, uh, Justin. Over to everybody. Thank you very much. All right. Thank okay. you. Sloan.